for having me, Chris. Well, let's start with the House Democratic subpoenas of the State Department of a massive uh, set of documents, as well as five witnesses for this week. Will President Trump comply with the House subpoena? That's going to be between the uh, president's attorneys, White House counsel's office, and the House committees. I have no news, unfortunately, to make on that issue, Chris. But what I do want to say is that I think it's unfortunate that the media continues to describe this individual as a whistleblower and honorific that this individual most certainly does not deserve. A partisan hit job does not make you a whistleblower just because you go through the Whistleblower Protection Act. Well, first of all, how do you know that this is a partisan hit job and how do you know that this is not a whistleblower? In fact, under DNI, the D D Department of National Intelligence rules, well, you know what, let's, let's go back this, and, I, and I, we're going to jump around a little bit because I didn't know you were going to go here. Here is the comment from the DNI, the acting DNI before Congress, uh, Joe McGuire, in his testimony this week. Take a look. I believe that the whistleblower and the inspector general have acted in good faith throughout. I have every reason to believe that they have done everything by the book and followed the law. That is the director of national intelligence, Joe McGuire, a lifetime servant of this country, a Navy SEAL. He says that the whistleblower was acting in good faith and acting by the book. On what basis do you say that this was a partisan hit job? First of all, if you read the seven-page little Nancy Drew novel that the whistleblower put together, it drips with condescension, righteous indignation, and contempt for the president. It's also ludicrous on its face. It describes an elaborate cover-up that also, by the way, uh, the president discussed on Sean Hannity, April 25th. What kind of secret cover-up are you also discussing on the airwaves of Fox News? Furthermore, they the, 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 the inspector general found evidence of political bias in the individual, which is not disputed by anybody. But, but, wait a minute, but he also, both the, inspect the director of national intelligence and the inspector general said they also found uh, his comments to be credible and a, a matter of urgent concern, and they turned it over to the Justice Department. The Justice so despite yeah. all that, they thought that this was a credible yeah, and they're, and they're a, a wrong. complaint. And, and they're wrong, Chris. Well, on, and, on whose basis? Chris, I've worked in the government now, the federal government now, for nearly three years. I know what the deep state looks like. I know the difference between a whistleblower and a deep state operative. This is a deep state operative, pure and simple. People who haven't been in the federal government, who haven't worked in the White House, may not appreciate this. But the situation is you have a group of unelected bureaucrats who think that they need to take down this president. I'll attend interagency meetings, Chris, where I know for a certain fact, if I don't invite the right people, the meeting will leak. If I don't say the right thing, they'll go to the Hill. If we propose a policy idea that they don't approve of, they'll work with Democrat appropriators to try to block it. They leak this president's phone calls. They publish hit pieces. They publish fake stories. They've been doing this continuously for nearly three years, and their motives and their agenda is clear. This is about, do you want a democracy in this country, or do you want a deep state? It's a binary choice for the American people. Again, this person that you're accusing of all this, the director of national intelligence, Joe McGuire, a lifelong servant of this country, said was acting in good faith and going by the book. But enough with the rhetoric. Let's talk about some specific facts in this. Why did President Trump use his private attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and as we just reported, two other private lawyers to try to dig up dirt from the Ukrainian government on Joe Biden rather than going through his State Department. First of all, and most importantly, when we keep talking about, quote, digging up dirt, it's an interesting choice of words. One of two things is true, Chris. Either the Ukrainian government or people associated with it possess real and actual knowledge of corrupt dealings by the Biden family, or they don't. If they do, is it not in the interest of all Americans to know what that is? We're going to get to what the Bidens in a minute, but I've asked you a specific question. I'd like a specific answer. The president has the State Department. He's got the CIA. He's got the Pentagon. He's got a number of other agencies. Why did he use three private lawyers to get information on Biden from the uh, from the Ukrainian government rather than go through all of the agencies of his government? Two different points. Number one. Uh, how about John, answering my question? John Durham 
as you know. I, I, wait a minute. John Durham is investigating something completely no, different. No, 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 I, no, there's, Stephen, there's, I'm there's, asking you a direct question. Why did the president use private attorneys rather than go to the State Department? If you don't know, that's an acceptable said, answer. But let's not talk about John Durham, I who's investigating the Trump investigation. There's two issues that were brought up I'm on the I'm not asking call. two issues. Why did the, he do it? Chris, I understand. I understand that you have your question. I have my answer. There's two issues that were brought up on the it, phone call. It, you have your non-answer at this point. There were two issues brought up in the phone call. One was Ukrainian knowledge about the nature of the, the collusion investigation that has inflicted so much pain and damage in our country. My point is, is that the Attorney General has appointed somebody from the Justice Department to look into that issue. Then there's the additional matter of Ukrainian corruption, which Giuliani, among others, are looking at. And it is proper and natural for, frankly, anybody concerned about the future of Ukraine in the United States to want to know information about corrupt dealings. What I find astonishing, Chris, is that the people that are so enraged about an effort to find any true and actual knowledge of foreign corrupt dealings related to Ukraine are the same ones who've been using the foreign produced dossier by a British spy to put this country through unending I'm political turmoil. I'm simply asking a question as to why. Is Schiff guilty I, 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 of I'm interfering asked, in our I'm election? I'm simply asking you a question dossier. as to why the president didn't use his government. You apparently are not going to answer that. I'll ask you another question. Why did the president decide to withhold $391 million in military aid to Ukraine last July the president has that been, had been approved by Congress. The president has been clear and consistent on this issue, not merely for the time he's been in office, his whole time as a candidate, and frankly decades before that. I'm just simply problem, asking why in July did problem, he decide to withhold about the About the problem of burden sharing in Ukraine and with our NATO allies. He has been clear and consistent on this issue, plus the matter of Ukrainian corruption. And for reasons I cannot fathom, the media, which is ordinarily interested in sunshine and transparency above all else, is remarkably uncurious about the information Ukraine possesses about the corruption of the previous administration. Okay, but let's, let's, just, let's just make this point. In May, as part of a regular interagency process, in May, two months before he withheld the aid, the Pentagon certified to Congress, certified, a formal process, certified to Congress after a rigorous process and after cons consultation with the State Department that Ukraine had made dramatic progress in fighting corruption and that the aid should be released. Why did the president, if, if the argument is corruption, why did the president go against his own Pentagon and his own State Department? Chris, I don't understand how you can ask that question while at the same time admonishing the president for wanting to get to the bottom of perhaps one of the biggest corruption scandals concerning Ukraine in the last few years. I, I'm not admonishing that anybody. I'm simply asking no, why did he no, go? Chris, Chris. I mean, this Chris, is, I like this you is a lot, but there's a, with there's all due respect, this is an exercise there's in a, obfuscation. There's a why tone did the of president judgment. go against his own Pentagon in all and State your, Department? There's a tone of judgment in all of your questions. So, yes, you are admonishing. And I can't speak to No, that's judgment on your part, And I can't speak to every single mid-level and low-level bureaucrat in the U.S. This government. This is the Deputy Secretary and of Defense for I, policy. No, what, Do you consider John Rood a, 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 a minion in the State Department? It's the, president's, it's the president's job and sworn duty to safeguard taxpayer dollars and the United States government's foreign policy. Getting to the bottom of a corruption scandal in Ukraine is in the American national interest. And if you want to understand why that complainant is so obviously politically biased, when he says that the president is threatening national security by trying to expose corruption, when he says, or she, that the president is hurting national security by trying to get to the bottom of a gigantic scandal that nobody has unearthed, the president is the whistleblower here. The president of the United States is the whistleblower. And this individual is a saboteur trying to undermine a democratically elected government. Saboteur, is he a spy?